Hello everyone, Neff here, and today we're looking at something you might be familiar with. Yes, this is the spacey voxel game thingy. Yes, indeed. However, what you might realize is this looks slightly different. First off, because there's world gen, which is always nice. But as well, this, even though it might look kind of similar, is very different. Because, basically, before I was working on the game in C++, and it was taking quite a long time. I didn't know anything about OpenGL, it was kind of annoying. And, yeah, I was kind of learning as I went. But now, you see, for a long time I hadn't released any videos because it was just getting so difficult to work on the game, but now, recently I've learned C Sharp quite well, like I pretty much know it in now at this stage, and I pretty much know how to use OpenGL nowadays. So I was kind of tossing around the idea and I decided, you know what, screw it, let's just try to re rewrite the entire engine, and I did. <laughs> so this entire thing is now a totally different thing, a totally different engine, and it's running in C Sharp. Um, so it's just C-Sharp and OpenGL, it's using OpenTK as the toolkit, and yeah, it's pretty impressive. I mean, what I found impressive myself is the fact that the original game took about three months to do, this took about three days, so yeah, that's kind of cool, it's kind of cool. And yeah. So does the ground here, I think I'm actually on short render distance actually, let me just turn it up. Yep, that was short. <laughs> So this is normal. I can go further, but I'd rather not for the recording with fraps and everything. But um, yeah, as you can see, we're in a fly cam here, so we're just flying around the place. But yeah, so this time we have some basic world gen. It's really basic right now. It's just with... Um, I'm using simplex noise to do the terrain. And like it's all separated into ch chunks, as you know. And the air chunk... Like, I've done a huge amount of optimization, so it runs pretty fast. I've done frost room culling, back face culling. A lot of this doesn't make any sense to any of you, you know, young, young people, but... If you've done any games, you know what this stuff means, so... Frostrum actually didn't do much, which kind of bugged me out, but it's because the rendering is surprisingly fast this time around. It's it's one of those things where I'm just processing so many blocks at a time that it's actually causing more... Like, the actual code can cost more than rendering, which sounds insane, but it is. That's a real difference you see when you switch from, like, C++ you know, plus plus to C Sharp. Because C++ is super fast, but C Sharp is just... It's so fast to code in... That is just wonderful. So, like, even if there is a performance hit, you don't mind, because it's just, it's so nice to work with. So, yeah, as you can see, we are walking around. It actually, like, this world is incredibly basic. It's really just a test, and it is working pretty well. Um, I only recently got the trees in, because the trees, they you might think they're simple, but actually they're really complicated. The trees use a special kind of structure engine to, to uh, be placed. So I can actually use the exact same thing to generate buildings, which is kind of cool. It took ages to get working, but um, once I got it working, it means now I could just decide, I want to, you know, generate structures. And I can just do that, like, in five seconds. It's cool. Because once this works, it works for everything. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and, of course, I have, like, even though we're a fly cam and there's no player physics yet, we can, um, let me just look around. I can still dig. I mean, you see we have our usual highlight here. And I actually decided to go to a different control method this time for the like the building and all. Um, so it's sort of similar to Minecraft, but a bit different. Um, just to show you, like if I want to dig here, it's left click to remove blocks, which is you know the standard. And as you can see, if we remove a bunch of blocks here, we'll go down through the dirt and towards stone and so on and so on. Obviously, there's no lighting engine yet, but that's you know that's down the road. Um, so that's that. But of course, if you want to place blocks, you just hold right click, and you see our selection box actually changes. Now it's yellow. And not only that, we um, it actually shows where we're going to place instead of the block we're selected, you know? So like if I look at that one there, see that's selected, but if I right click and hold it down, um, it shows where I'm going to place a block. And so if I left click now, it places a block. Oh, and actually it just occurred to me, the reason I'm placing a block is I haven't selected the right block. And um, I've currently selected an air block. And um, let's select like stone or something. Is that stone? No, that's no. <laughs> and what's stone again? There we go, that's stone. So remove it, left click, and then to place it's hold right click, and then just place them. And this might seem kind of strange, like it's not very fast, but at the same time, if you want to make something, you know, complicated, it's actually really cool, because, um, like, I don't have a crosshair right now, there's no uh, GUI rendering, so I don't have a crosshair, but what I can do is just go, like, you know, if I want to, like, do a perfect arch, I can actually just see where every block is going to be placed, so I can do it whichever shape I want to, you know? And that's really handy. You can also sort of do diagonal blocks sometimes, yeah, it, with a very small, you know, area of, um, and it's cool for that, because you know if you're going to do it or not. But yeah, and just remove them again. And yeah, another thing to note, though, is the fact that the last time I did this, yeah, 
I was going to do a limited world, so like the worlds were going to be a limited size, and you kind of like I was going to loop them over at the edges. I kind of decided against that this time, and the reason being was actually it was mainly kind of based on advice from people. A lot of people I asked just said, "Oh yeah, just make it infinite," you know. To be honest, I think limited is kind of better, but at the same time, it's actually easier to do infinite. As strange as that sounds, it's harder to generate stuff, but at the same time, it means that all of the math is really simple for like you know mobs and stuff. They just it's much more straightforward. Nothing has to loop over edges and stuff. There's no edges. It just it's infinite. So yeah, so this entire world just goes out from zero in every direction. That includes up and down. And yes, that's also another thing. Unlike Minecraft, this game has cubic chunks. So you can go down as far as you want to, or up as far as you want to. You could build in the space if you want to. And actually, I kind of want to have that in the game, where you can actually just build and like the sky gets darker and you see stars and stuff. And obviously, if you go down, I really want to put like a hell layer down there. That'd be kind of cool. And that's totally doable now in this engine, which is really nice. Um, I'm actually kind of impressed because this world gen is really basic and kind of hacky the way I put it in. Like the noise I use is not great, but um, I still sort of made it work. It's not smooth at all, but it, it kind of it tweens a bit and it works. You still kind of get these rolling hills. There's no mountains obviously yet, but like that's, that's down the road. And biomes I'll be doing soon probably. I have to use like a Veroni graph or it's, it's, it's awkward. Yeah, <laughs> but um, it's doable. But um, yeah, so it's cool. So it's it's just it's nice that as I said, you just drop in and like the whole world is infinite around you, like in every direction. It's really pretty, and I'm really psyched that the trees are working now. Because the reason the trees were so awkward is that you have to remember this whole world. It looks like it's all just like one thing, but this entire world is actually divided up into chunks of sixteen by sixteen. So it's like it's really awkward when you consider like if you have to you know place a tree, and that tree lies across two chunks. Like for example, let's say if I get like a piece of stone here. And you imagine, right, that those two pieces of stone are showing you two different chunks. Um, like, if that tree is in both of them, each chunk is generated separately. And so, like, each chunk, when it's generated, has to go, okay, but what if one of the chunks besides me wants to put something inside? Like, okay, let me rephrase that. <laughs> what if a chunk, like, that's next to the current chunk has to, you know, generate a tree? Obviously, you can't just wait until you get to that chunk, because then it, it wouldn't work. So you have to actually make it so that this chunk checks all the chunks around it and generates the stuff from the other chunks into this chunk. So yeah, it's kind of awkward. So like, if you can imagine, you could look at that, say like this tree here, and just imagine like that this one block was actually placed in a different chunk, you know, just the stone part. So like, you'd have to make sure that that gets done separately in two different parts. So that means regardless of which way you find this chunk, like whichever direction you come from, and, it, and like whichever chunk loads first, you'll still get the proper tree in the end. So yeah, it's kind of complicated, but once it's in there, it's cool, because it means I can make any structure now, like, just as an array of, like, IDs, and just, like, have it placed in the world wherever I want. And it's cool. So yeah, the whole thing of... It's really interesting doing procedural stuff versus random stuff. Like, the last time I did this, admittedly, a lot of stuff was just random. And that... There's a big difference between procedural and random. You don't realize until you start trying to, you know, code procedural stuff, but there's a huge difference. Um, actually, you might have seen that tree there loaded in in two different parts. But it's, um, yeah, like even that one there. Like you see that block over there in the distance? Oh, wait, just became a tree, <laughs> as I said that. But um, but yeah. Uh, but it's it's really complicated, but it's actually kind of cool though once you start getting your head around it. It's the idea that instead of just randomly choosing, you know, like positions and plunking things there, you have, like every position is predictable. I mean, this whole world comes off of a seed, which is just one random, intro like a, a number, like, hey, uh, words. Basically, it's an integer that's about eight characters long, like eight digits, and that generates the whole world. Now, I randomly generate that number, but at the same time, if I wanted to, I could make it so that it just lets you put a seed in, you enter a seed, and of course, if you enter two different seeds, it gives you totally different worlds. Like, even if they vary by one number, it's totally different. But at the same time, if you enter the same number, it's exactly the same world every time. And that's not just the world, that's for the trees and everything, that's kind of cool. Um, actually, this render distance is kind of small, I want to kind of crank it up a bit. I have the fog very close because it kind of hides the chunks coming in, but uh, this is normal. Let's see. Large. Yeah, it's a bit laggy with fraps. But um, I actually I haven't even sent it really massive yet. The thing is, because I don't have any mountains and I'm not doing any occlusion culling, um, I do have to be kind of careful. But as I said, in this, I've done a lot, a lot of optimization and it does work fairly fast. I just have to do more with chunk loading. Because right now, everything's being generated on the fly. So, like, this is the speed of chunks being generated, not loaded, you know? Like, you know, in Minecraft, if you um, if you load a world the first time, you have to kind of, like, let the lo chunks load in or it's too laggy. Uh, here, this is all being generated constantly. 
So, and it's still fairly fast. So I'm quite happy with that. And um, yeah. So I only have this one world for now. I might show off a different one in another video, like an ice world or something. And just to show off the difference. But yeah, it's cool. I'm just psyched the trees are working because that was, oh, I was working on that for a while. <laughs> it was really driving me insane. But, um, but yeah. Alrighty, but that's it guys. So I just wanted to give you a quick update on what's going on. And yeah, oh, and also the podcast hasn't been up in about two weeks. That's actually my fault. I had a massive toothache and couldn't talk. So don't blame Nugget for that. That was more down to me. But we will be back now this week and we'll have more stuff on. So yeah, indeed. And yeah, look forward to that. And be doing videos whenever I can. And yeah, and good day.